Rapid succession, four earthquakes strike Sichuan and Guizhou in less than 24 hours. Taiwan strongly promotes the production of drones amid increasing tensions with China. The Chinese military is having a new wave of major adjustments. Former Australian Prime Minister Morrison responded to Beijing's authoritarian warning. Military exercises simulating police suppressing labor protests reveal the fear tactics of the CCP. From the evening of October 1st to noon of October 2nd, less than 24 hours, four earthquakes occurred in the Sichuan and Guizhou provinces in mainland China. At noon on the 2nd, the China Earthquake Network said that at 12.41 on the 2nd, a magnitude 3.6 earthquake occurred in Weining County, Bijie City, Guizhou Province, with a depth of 10 kilometers. After the earthquake, the official Weibo account of China Railway Chengdu Group said that due to the earthquake, there was a different degree of shaking along the railway lines and some stations in the province. They have urgently closed certain sections of railway lines within the province. Trains passing through these areas will experience delays, which in turn have caused delays for subsequent departing trains. After the earthquake, netizens from Yina Town, Weining, Bijie City, and Jiaoyang District, Jiao Tom City, Yunnan Province, reported feeling the tremors. At 10.16 p.m., 7.47 p.m., and 7.34 p.m. on October 1st, three earthquakes of magnitude 3.3, 4.2, and 4.4 occurred in Xichu County, Gansi Prefecture, Sichuan Province. The depths of the epicenters were 15 kilometers, 10 kilometers, and 14 kilometers, respectively. Recently, earthquakes have occurred in many places in mainland China. On May 2nd, Baoshan in Yunnan province was hit by two earthquakes, the largest being 5.2 magnitude. Xingwen County in Sichuan province also had two earthquakes, with the largest being 4.5 magnitude. There were also earthquakes in Gaizhou County in Tibet and Zigong. Taiwan is mobilizing both public and private sectors to develop its unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, industry in the context of the Chinese regime's constant and increasing threats and activities disturbing the island's airspace and waters. According to Nikkei, Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense plans to spend about $1.5 billion on producing more than 3,000 UAVs, also called drones, for military use by 2028. Military UAVs are used primarily for long-range surveillance and intelligence gathering. The National Chungshan Institute of Science and Technology, the unit responsible for weapons development of Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense, is collaborating with private sector firms to mass-produce five types of military-grade drones that the institute developed. Taiwan's Ministry of Economic Affairs has developed a subsidy program covering up to 50% of research and development costs for private companies so that they can best support UAV development projects. Last year, Taiwan set up a UAV development center in the southern city of Chiayi, where about 20 businesses are concentrated, including major manufacturers and academic institutions. Chinese drones account for about 70% of the international market. However, the U.S. and many other countries have boycotted Chinese products to protect their national security. Therefore, Taiwan is viewing the production of UAVs as a new growth industry. Taiwanese aviation company Geosat Aerospace and Technology has cooperated with Turkey and several EU countries this year in developing drones. Li Chongqi, an executive in charge of cybersecurity at Geosat, said, we see a strong need to replace drones made in China with Taiwanese-made or other products. According to Hong Kong media, the Chinese regime is launching significant personnel adjustments among the military's most senior generals. It's believed that those under investigation include National Defense Minister Li Shangfu, PLA Rocket Force's first commander, Wei Fenghua, two deputy ministers of the Equipment Development Department of the Central Military Commission, Xia Qingyue and Rao Wenmin, and commander of the PLA Navy's North Sea Fleet Wang Dazhong. Zhao Lanjian, a former Chinese reporter, recently pointed out that the Chinese regime has often released news to disrupt public opinion and cover up the big plan of Chinese President Xi Jinping. 
The information about the investigation of Li Shangfu has been widely published in China. Besides involving high-ranking military officials, Chinese military industries are also within the scope of this wave of inquiry. There are also rumors that Liu Zhenli, chief of staff of the Joint Staff Department of the Central Military Commission, will succeed Li Shangfu as National Defense Minister. Commander of the PLA Air Force Chang Dingqiu will assume Liu Zhenli's former position. Chang Dingqiu's position will go to the current vice chief of the Joint Staff Department of the Central Military Commission, Jing Dianfeng, and Wang Xiaobin, the current commander of the Southern Theater Command, may serve as commander of the PLA Strategic Support Force. Analysts believe China's Politburo will announce a significant adjustment in the military's top leadership at its next regular session. Even if the changes are not revealed shortly, a major military reform will be at the third plenary session of the 20th CPC Central Committee. In a recent award ceremony for the Shenzhou 15 aircrew held in Beijing on September 25th, notable absentees were Li Shangfu and Zhang Youxia, rumored to be under investigation. Zhang Youxia has a very close relationship with China's aerospace industry. He has held many positions, including Commander-in-Chief of China's Manned Space Program, as well as Commander-in-Chief of China's space agencies. Therefore, if there are no health problems, Zhang's failure to participate in the event is mysterious. The rocket force, the CCP's trump card army, established by Xi Jinping, was recently purged. All commanders, political commissars, and others were replaced, and Wei Feng Hua, the PLA rocket force's first commander, is said to be in a bad situation. The above information has led the outside world to speculate that Xi is deeply purging the military. However, former Chinese reporter Zhao Lantian said the Chinese regime intentionally spread these rumors. He said on Twitter, The rocket force, the equipment development department of the Central Military Commission, and a number of officials have indeed been purged. However, this internal dispute was not a mutiny or rebellion in the traditional form. To be precise, it's called the removal of people who are not trustworthy for the effective implementation of Xi's further military planning. Li Shangfu indeed encountered difficulties, but the positions of Zhang Youxia and Zhang Xiangmin are very stable. Xi's power is also very stable. He also said the reason the Chinese regime released news such as Bei Daihu elders put pressure on Xi, the PLA is being purged, and Xi Jinping's power is unstable, is to deliberately divert public opinion and deceive the West to cover up Xi's terrible, cruel, and monstrous plan. His plan is still unclear, but will have the participation and support of Russian President Putin, and may even be unrestricted warfare. Former Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison is expected to visit Taiwan in October. In response, China's ambassador to Australia has warned that this will undoubtedly hurt the relationship between the two countries. Australian media reported on October 2nd that Xiao Tian, China's ambassador to Australia, took advantage of his participation in an event commemorating the 74th anniversary of China's National Day to caution former Prime Minister Morrison and other Australian politicians that the visits to Taiwan by members of the Australian Parliament would weaken the Australia-China relationship. Xiao Tian stated, Their words and actions regarding the Taiwan issue will certainly have a negative impact on the continued improvement of the China-Australia relationship. Former Prime Minister Morrison responded that China's ambassador does not have the authority to warn Australian parliament members about visiting Taiwan, nor does he have the power to decide how Australia will implement its One China policy. Morrison said, I look forward to visiting Taiwan and honoring their many achievements as a successful democratic nation, having built a mature and outstanding market economy, playing a significant role both regionally and globally. Earlier, Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced that Morrison would visit the island from October 11th to the 12th, attending the 7th Yoshan Forum to deliver a speech, promote the new southbound policy, and show friendship and support for Taiwan. In recent years, officials from the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, the Czech Republic, Japan, and other countries have visited Taiwan to express support for its democracy, despite warnings from the Chinese government. Recently, a video of a military exercise at a university in Yunnan province, China, 
has been circulating on Chinese social media. Notably, this exercise required groups of students to simulate police, suppressing labor protests, demanding overdue wages, grabbing public attention. An account named Teacher Lee is not your teacher posted the video, stating that on September 29th, during a military training session organized by Chu Xiong Normal University in Yunnan Province, while one group of students was parading, another group of students pretended to be laborers, protesting with banners reading, pay back the owed wages, while shouting, pay us, and rushed onto the field. This labor group was portrayed as thugs attacking the police. Another group of students played the role of armed police, holding the shields in a prepared attack posture. When the workers demanding overdue wages rushed towards the armed police on the field, clashes erupted, with smoke bombs causing chaos. Ultimately, the armed police arrested all of the workers and escorted them from the field. This reenactment mirrors real-life situations and reflects the current characteristics of Chinese society. However, what is the purpose behind this training? Die Li Dian, executive director of the Youth Party of China, believes this is a form of ideological indoctrination and veiled threats aimed at instilling fear into the nervous system and minds of every student. Die continues, the Chinese government is using all means to maintain social stability, and the Chinese people have been forced to accept this power structure since their college years. He says, from this military exercise, the Chinese government wants students to understand that, in the future, if there is any protest for rights or any demands for explanations from the government, they will be arrested and suppressed by violence. Current affairs commentator Lan Xu explains, the purpose of the exercise is to deeply instill into university students the basic mindset that the CCP is above the law. Internet users comment, the purpose of the Chinese government is to nurture a sense of brutality and psychological abuse towards the people in these students. This is truly an inhumane performance. The enemy of this regime is the people. Aren't those migrant workers demanding wages holding signs the parents of these students? In the end, the terrifying purpose of the indoctrination exercise has been deciphered by netizens which is for the CCP to make the public understand that any resistance will indeed be met with repression. Lan Chu says, In the current social and economic decline under the control of the CCP, large-scale protests to protect human rights will undoubtedly increase, and the number of people standing up to resist will surely grow.